of the most important parts of the Iditarod are the checkpoints. Without them, the mushers would run out of food, have nowhere to sleep, and generally have a tough time on the trail altogether. This year, there was a total of 23 checkpoints in the Iditarod, and each one is significantly different. The checkpoints range from abandoned gold mine towns, while others are just tiny villages, and others still are houses, home to one family. All of them have a place for rest and food for the dogs and food for the mushers. A musher has the ability to rest at a checkpoint or continue moving ahead. It is mandatory for a musher to have at least 24 hours of rest in a checkpoint. Checkpoints also have doctors to take care of the dogs and doctors to take care of the mushers. Every time a musher pulls in a checkpoint, they have to do a mandatory checkup before leaving. Mushers can also leave dogs in checkpoints in case there is something wrong with said dogs. If they didn't have the medics or the drop-off system, many of the dogs would have died, giving the mushers a hard time. And fans of the race would feel horrible. Checkpoints are just one of the things that make the Iditarod Rod special. Not only do they give comfort and warmth to the musher, but they also take care of the dogs and make sure they're okay as well. The Iditarod Trail has lots of different terrain that it goes through on its 1,049 miles. The trail starts out with a typical northern forest that goes into a gentle rolling hills. Then goes to falling Yetna River, uphill, leading to Finger Lake. The trail usually leads teams to going back and forth between rivers. Coming across Rainy Pass which is considered to be the mo one of the most difficult parts of the Iditarod, goes into a large tundra.
that then turns into bumpy hills that goes across icy rivers, which includes large moguls. Now upon the most difficult part of the race, the burn. A wooded place, usually with little or no snow, and some gravel, which is hard on the sled as well as the dogs. Finally, the rest of the race, which includes large cliffs, more rolling hills, rivers, and open tundra, and a beach that then comes to the end of the Iditarod. Being a rookie, Ger Idar Hashkovak never raced at Dayron, and on his first time, he is clear to state that this is what he wanted to do and what he will do. I'm from Finland. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you're going to run the Iditarod. Is it a dream? Yeah, that's, uh, I, uh, of course, I start to dream about that in early 90 because uh, you start Cut to off when he says, of, of course. Uh, he did have many troubles along the way, like all rookies and even veterans, but overall it paid off. The 26 to Gnome, he has now a lot more money in his wallet. Ralph Johansson, a veteran to this race, runs the idea rod again. But will he win it? That is the question. He had a pretty good run in this idea rod, rod and in others' idea rod. <laughs> As he is eighth to cripple and has been staying in the tops for almost the whole idea rod, he tries to make it 
to know. Overall, it paid off, and he finishes this at the rod in eighth place. This now concludes the monster segment of this documentary. Ralph Johansson has many dogs. He raised all of his Iditarogs that dogs that he has now by that he has now by giving them all the proper training and exercise they needed. He trained them knowing that even if one of them get sick, the other dogs would be able to go on without the sick dog. In that way, the sick dog can get better. Now here's a little extra to see what he does every day to get ready for their tomorrow. He takes them sledding so they can get better in what he wants to accomplish. They go sledding every day to get exercise so they'll be ready for the Iditarod. He has 16 dogs that he used in the Iditarod race this year. And he, and he went down to nine dogs because the other ones either got sick or they got sick. <laughs> And they go sledding every day. In the morning, they sled all throughout the day and they come back home during the evening. And this is just a little bit of what happened in this year's 2016 I Did A Rod. Here are all of his dogs. As you notice, they're all either black or they're white or they're both. Do you see those socks on their feet? They keep those on their feet so that they don't get cold and and they and they stop running. Every single Iditarod musher must have those on their dog's feet so that their dog's feet don't get cold and so it prevents them from their feet freezing and probably falling to sleep. Listening. Bye.